Hi everyone, welcome to live stream Yoga with Louise, tips and cues to keep you safe and strong on the mat. Today's class is all about challenging our sense of balance and coordination. As always, play where you're comfortable, modify if you need to, take a time out by either coming into child pose or pausing the stream if you need it. You ready to play? Let's hit the mat. We're going to set up for today's class in a down dog frame. So I'd like you to find your way to the mat, maybe drop down to a four point kneeling frame. And then when you're ready, tuck your toes under, float your bum up to the ceiling, giving me an inverted V shape and settle into your down dog. If you're feeling a bit tight, <clears throat> take it through blissful dog, Svananda, by giving me soft movement through the knees and the hips, easing into it. <clears throat> As the hips and the back chain and the legs starts warming up, settle into your down dog. Maybe just bending and extending softly through the back chain of the legs. And then when you're ready, I'd like you to try and hold your down dog frame for at least 30 seconds. Hands more or less shoulder width apart, feet hip width distance apart, crown of the head dropping softly down to the floor as you pike your bum up to the ceiling. Really try and drop those heels of the feet to the ground. Open up that tightness along the back chain of the legs and keep the belly button softly pulled in. Give me a few more breaths here in Down Dog, Adho Mukha, Svanasana, and then we'll start playing directly with our balancing series on the right side of the body. And we'll try to hold the first round for at least 30 seconds on each pose. Soften through the right leg, swing the right leg through to the inside of the right hand, lining up the knee and the ankle in a straight line, and then stick up your back leg, dropping it to the floor at a 45 degree angle so that you can come up in a warrior one line. Check that both hips are looking to the front of the mat, not to the side of the mat. So that back foot at 45 and softly float the hands overhead. Make you wiggle that lead leg forward and try to drop a little bit lower into your warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Make sure that the weight is coming down evenly through the pelvis to the floor and that the weight distribution is equal on the front and the back leg. We're going to transition from here gently into a warrior two lap. Open up the back leg to 90. See if you can sink the legs a little bit lower to the floor as you open up the arms into a soft T frame. Check that you're not dropping that back hand. Give me a nice, beautiful, long lengthened line from the back arm to the front arm. And then keep your gaze steady over the front forefinger. Watch that you're not leaning into that lead leg. Once again, weight coming down evenly. And this time your hips are looking to the side of the room because you've opened up that back leg to 90. Hold your warrior two, the Rubhadrasana two, and then we'll reverse it before bringing it into a triangle. When you're ready, bring your focus to your front hand, invert the palm. Drop your back hand to your back leg, finding a holding spot, and gently bend the lead arm, finding almost a frame to your head. Sink as low as you can through the pelvis, either resting that back hand softly on your thigh or wrapping and reaching for the inside of the um, back leg. Keep that bend on your lead leg and keep dropping down as low as you can through the pelvis. From here, you're gonna gently ease your way into a triangle line. Straighten up the hands and the legs, maybe stepping up the back legs slightly as you drop the lead hand down to the inside of the lead foot. Maybe just finding a leaning spot, pushing with the back of your hand against the inside of the leg, or perhaps reaching for a block and placing the block on the inside of your leg, finding a lean in position and thinking of giving me a soft T frame through the arms. If you've got the range of motion, perhaps dropping that lead arm all the way down to the mat and finding a space either for your palm or your fingertips on the floor. Hold your triangle frame, trying to open up through the body. Think soft T-frame running a broomstick from the top hand to the bottom hand. 
We're going to reverse the triangle. Bring the top arm flush to your ear and then cross over the midline of the body, placing your fingertips on the floor or maybe reaching for the block once more and finding a holding position or perhaps holding onto the shin or the outside of the leg as you gently rotate your triangle, floating the right arm gently behind you and giving me a slight twisting frame through the body. Hold for at least three breaths here. And then we're going to ease our way into a standing split. Think of untwisting the body and firmly placing the fingertips on the floor. Push the weight off the back leg, transferring it to the front leg and kicking up the back leg behind you, walking the hands as close to your lead leg as you can so that you're framing the lead leg on either side and just think of gently kicking up the back leg behind you, maybe even holding on to the calf with your right hand if you can or keeping both hands gently connected to the floor. Play with the balance. You're going to give me at least 10 more breaths here and then we're going to find our way to an eagle line. When you're coming into the eagle, you're going to challenge by trying to keep the left foot from touching the floor if you can. Gently think of creeping your hands slightly forward in front of your toe line. Soften the back leg, bending it, feeding it through. If you need to, tap the toe on the floor. Otherwise, keep the toe hovering off the floor. You're going to cross the left leg over the right, sitting directly into a little chair and trying to tuck the left foot behind the right calf. Float your arms into goal post and overlay the left arm on top of the right. Sink a little bit deeper into your chair, trying to look through your soft prayer hands to the wall at the opposite end of the room as you sit into Garudasana, eagle. Hold for at least 10 more seconds here. And then we're going to come straight into hand to big toe. You're using strap or no strap. I'll demo without the strap first. You're going to unbind, thinking knee to nose on the left. Take your middle index finger and thumb and see if you can make a big toe lock around the big toe on the left. Extending that leg out in front, right arm either soft at your side or t-shirt or maybe leaning into a wall. If you can't easily reach for the foot and you've maybe got a strap at hand, if your strap is secure, make a nice little loop. Secure it with your D-ring. Feed the strap through your foot. Holding on to the edge of the strap. Keep your eye on the focal point in front of you and bring it into the A-line. If your strap does not have a secure D-ring, just step into the strap, giving yourself more or less equal play on both sides of the strap as you come into the A-line. Okay, where you're comfortable, keep your eye on that focal point on the floor or the wall in front of you, challenging your sense of balance. When you're ready, come into the B-line, opening up the leg to the side of the room, either keeping your right arm softly at your side or maybe holding onto the hip bone or keeping that soft T-frame. If you need to, bring yourself against the wall or a piece of furniture that you can just gently lean into with the right fingertips. Ease your way back towards the A-line and hold. The ankle on the right is probably speaking to you at this stage, try to hold it. You're going to come straight into a warrior three line from here, trying to keep that left foot floating off the floor if you can, or tap it out and take a time out. Float the left leg behind you as you frame your ears on the right, trying to keep your hips and your shoulders as parallel to the floor as you can. And then gently, Think of dropping both sets of fingertips to the floor, coming back into that standing split. Framing your lead leg 
on both sides and kicking up the left leg behind you. Just try to make the crown of your head nice and heavy to the floor. And then stay here or take it into some dynamic play by bending the lead leg and jumping up and down three times, almost as if you were trying to launch yourself off the mat before you come back to your standing split and then step up with the left leg, stacking underneath your hips as you take a gentle forward fold, Uttanasana, connecting both hands to the mat if you can, or using the block to find a lean-in position on the mat, or perhaps just gently keeping your fingertips on the mat, or hanging from the waist, or bracing on the top of your thighs in a tabletop position. Use the forward fold as a mini timeout, gently rocking the weight back and forth, between the balls and the heels of your feet, maybe trying to release that pressure on the right ankle that was working so hard as you were balancing through the first round. And then from your forward fold, you're going to ease your way into a plank line, either stepping back one leg at a time or taking a little bunny hop and landing in your plank line. Body as parallel to the mat as you can, bracing through your core, the tops and the back of your legs, and pushing the mat strongly away with your palms. We're going to chaturanga down and come into an up dog. Use the knees if you need to, or execute from your plank. Bend the elbows, trying to keep them hugging in towards the rib cage as you hover just off the floor for a few beats. And then drag the weight forward over your wrist line and your big toes, coming to rest either on the bridges of your feet or keeping the toes tucked under if you prefer. Play with it, see what works best for you today. Trying to release all that tension from the ankle joint on the right. Kick it back into, the, into child, big toes together, knees open nice and wide, taking a little time out. If the shoulders are tender, just cut the arms around the body, back of the hands connected and the palms looking up. Or you can find a comfortable forearm step, resting the forearms on the back of your hands. Play where you're comfortable. Take a little time out here, and then we'll repeat that balancing series on the other side. From child pose, balasana, find your way through four point kneeling to set up your down dog frame. Tuck your toes under, pike your bum up to the ceiling and settle into your down dog. Once more, take it through spananda if you need to, giving me soft movement through the knees and the hips, just to open up and release any tension that you might be holding onto and then settle into your down dog. Check that your feet are more or less hip width distance apart, hands shoulder width apart. Really try and sink into the down dog this round. Body should be feeling a lot warmer now. And try to almost draw up the energy through your fingertips, through the palms, through the forearms, engaging the chest and the arms, not just planting all the weight into the hands. Let's ease our way into a warrior, one line leading with the left leg in front this time. Soften the left knee, swing up the left leg to the inside of the left hand, lining up your knee and your ankle in a straight line on the lead leg. Step up your back leg slightly at 45 as you plant your back foot into the mat, making sure that you've got equal weight on the big toe, baby toe and heel. Check that you're not leaning forward. Try to drop down evenly through the pelvis. Really root through that back foot and try to even out the body weight distribution on the front and the back leg. Check that both of your hip bones are looking like little headlights towards the front of your mat. Try to creep the front foot maybe forward a little bit and drop the hips a little bit lower to the floor this round. When you're ready, Ease your way into a warrior two. Think of opening up the back leg at 90. So now your hips are looking to the side of the room. Try not to drop that back hand. Maybe peek back for a second. Check that your arms are more or less shoulder height on both sides, palms looking down. 
And then once you're in position, keep your gaze steady over the front foot. Your gaze steady over the front fingertips, front foot, knee over ankle. Give me a few more breaths here. In Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, before you reverse the warrior. Invert your front hand. Drop your back hand to your back leg, either resting on the leg or reaching for the inner thigh. Think of softly bending the lead arm, almost framing your head, lending a softness to the arm as you gently arch and almost give me a crescent shape on the back. Hold your reverse warrior. Weight distribution equal on those legs. And then when you're ready, think of setting up your triangle line, trikonasana from here, straightening up through the legs, maybe stepping up the back leg slightly so that it's more than 45. Think about that soft T-frame you had in the warrior two line. Somebody's pulling you forward, pop out the back hip. Find your triangle line, either pushing with the back of the hand on the inside of the knee, or maybe dropping the fingertips or the palms nice and low to the floor or reaching for your block and using it as a prop. Wherever you decide to play, find that soft T-frame through the arms and try to keep your right hip stacked over the left. When you're ready, prepare to take that little twist as you reverse your warrior. Bring the top arm as close towards the left ear as you can, and then cross over the midline of the body, rotating on the hips to plant your fingertips or palm on the floor or reach for your shin or your leg, find a grip post or use the block, and then softly come in to the rotation. Play where you're comfortable, readjusting the back foot if you need to, and check that that back foot is at a 45, so that you can get that nice rotation through the hips. If it's planted at 90, you're going to struggle to get that rotation through the hips. Give me a few more breaths here, <clears throat> and then we'll ease our way from here into a standing split before we find Eagle Garudasana. When you're ready, think of gently coming out of the twist, planting your fingertips or your palms on the mat, and step up the back leg, gently throwing it up behind you and keeping the hands um, as close to your foot line. So if you started with the hands away from the body, walk them closer to your foot line so that you can comfortably frame the foot, gently kicking up the back leg behind you, and maybe even holding onto the calf with your left hand, if you can, as you come into the gentle standing split. Play where you're comfortable, hold, Let's see if we can hold it for at least six more seconds here and then we'll ease our way into eagle. Remember, when you come into eagle, try to challenge your balance by trying to keep that right foot floating off the floor. So as you bend the leg and peel up, if you don't need to drop the foot to the floor, find a focal point on the wall in front of you and just run your eye up the point. Then knee to nose on the right and then cross the right leg over the left trying to tuck behind the cup. Sit into your chair softly and go post frame your arms. Then overlay the right arm on top of the left, coming into a gentle bind, and perhaps trying to sit a little bit deeper into your ego. Look softly through your prayer hands to the wall at the opposite end of the room. Just keep your eyes soft and your gaze steady. See if you can give me a couple more breaths here, and then you're come, going to come into hand to big toe, A line. So as you unbind, connect your big toe to the floor for a second if you need to. Keep your gaze steady on the wall in front of you. And then take your middle index finger and thumb, reaching for the big toe, and then extending that leg out in front. Using your strap if you needed it. So maybe stepping in and feel comfortable to 
pull yourself against the wall. Maybe your balance is off today and you need to bring fingertips against the wall to find your A-line. Play where you're comfortable. Think of that root through your base side. So on your supportive side, think shoulder over hip, hip over knee, knee over ankle as you come into position. Left hand soft at your side, brace on the hip or gently T-shaped. When you're ready, open up into the B-line. And don't so much focus on how far you can open up through the hips. Just play with your range of motion. Maybe you're going to keep it really small. Play where you're comfortable. Try to keep that stack, shoulder over hip, hip over knee, knee over ankle. Bring it back to the A-line. Think of that stack, run a broomstick through the shoulder, through the hip, through the knee, through the ankle. And then gently set up your warrior three, connecting your foot to the mat if you need to, to find your balance or keeping that foot hovering off the mat. Think of gently framing your ears on either side, keeping your hips as stacked as you can. Find warrior three, Rubhadrasana three, and then gently drop your hands to the mat, maybe creeping them to frame the lead leg as you come back into a soft standing split, kicking up that back leg gently behind you. Hold. Stay or play dynamically. Bend the lead leg and think of gently just hopping up and down three times before you find your way into a soft forward fold. Check that your hands are stacking softly to the floor, feet stacking underneath your hips. Find the forward fold that works for you. And maybe to release that tension, rock the body weight gently between the forefront and the back of the foot, trying to release any discomfort in the ankle if you need to. Bring it up and give it a few rotations. And then when you're ready, you're going to find your way into a plank line. So either stepping back or hopping and finding that nice extended line, pushing the mat strongly away with your hands as you come into position. Hold strongly. When you're ready for your Chaturanga Dandasana, either keep your plank line or drop to the knees and execute from four-point kneeling. If you're executing from four-point kneeling, as you bend the elbows, don't chicken wing them out. Make sure you're still hugging them in towards the rib cage. As you come down, hovering your chin off the floor for a second, drag the weight forward over the wrist line, setting up your up top, either bridges of the feet connected or toes tucked under, whichever works for you. Maybe even playing with both and trying to release any tension that you're feeling in the ankles. From here, you're going to ease your way into child pose, balasana, big toes together, knees open nice and wide, finding either an extended line, a stacked line, or a soft draped line with the arms. Play where you're comfortable. Take a little time out here. And then we'll take that same little routine that we just played with and we'll flow through beginning on the right and moving right through to the left as a vinyasa. This time, as you go through it, try and focus on your balance, trying to keep the leg that's off the floor hovering off the floor so that you can really condition your base leg. Do what you can, play with where you're comfortable. You ready? Let's do this. Bind your weight to four point kneeling and ease into a down dog foot. Pause for a few breaths here. And then softly step the right leg to the inside of the right hand, dropping your back leg to 45, framing 
your head on either side as you set up your warrior one. Hips looking to the front of the room. Transition into a soft warrior two. Opening up the back leg to 90 and finding a soft T-frame through the arms. Pierce the wall at opposite ends of the room with your fingertips. Reverse the warrior. Invert your front hand. Drop your back hand to your back leg. Frame your head gently with the arm as you give me a crescent shape through the back. Then softly wiggle the arms down. Straighten up the legs, stepping up the back leg. Somebody's pulling you forward. Hinge forward and set up your triangle. Soft T-frame through the arms. Bring the top arm closer to your ear. Cross over the midline of the body, finding your reverse triangle frame or revolved triangle frame. Drop both hands softly to the floor. Step up the back leg and find a standing split. Fingertips or palms gently connected to the mat, head floating softly down. Set up your eagle line, trying to keep that back leg off the floor. Think knee to nose as you come up. Cross the left leg over the right. Go first frame through the arms. Overlay the left arm on top of the right. And try to sit back a little bit deeper into your chair as you bind into eagle. Peel up along the center line, reaching for the big toe. As you come up, enter hand to big toe A. Open up into the B line. Come back to the A line. You're going to find your way to a balancing warrior three from here, trying to keep that left leg off the floor if you can, or tapping out onto the mat if you need to. Framing your head. Drop both hands softly to the floor. Set up a standing split, creeping the hands closer to the leg line. And then maybe taking three little jumps. Find a soft forward fold that works for you. Release that tension from the back of your legs and the ankles. Soften through the knees, step or hop into a plank line, pushing the floor strongly away. Chaturanga down with control, transitioning into your up dog. Nice and strong through those shoulders, strong through the core. Eat straight back into down dog if you can, or take a time out in child if you need it. Use your down dog as you would child for recovery. Pushing to the feet, pushing to the hands. Work the front and the back chain of the body. Let's repeat that sequence on the left. Stepping the left leg to the inside of the left hand. Step up the back leg at 45. Peeling up gently to set up your warrior one line. Weight coming down evenly through the hips. Transition. Into your warrior two, opening up softly, back leg at 90, T frame in the arms. Invert your hand, drop your back hand to your back leg, give me a soft wrap around as you reverse the warrior, thinking of framing your head gently. Giving me a slight crescent shape through the back. And set up your triangle line. Think of that soft warrior two flat. Step up the back leg slightly and extend both legs. Somebody's pulling your lead hand forward, pop up the back hip gently and hinge forward. Using block or no block, find a soft resting T-frame, shape through the arms. And then bring that top arm as close to the right ear as you can, crossing over the midline of the body, readjusting your back foot if you need to, bring it in tighter if you need to. Softly rotate through the shoulders, finding fingertips or flat palm to the mat or finding a grip position 
or using the block on the outside of your left leg. Reverse your warrior. And then gently come up and set up your eagle line. Before you do, drop both hands to the floor. Find a stuffed standing split. Creeping your hands to frame the leg on either side. When you're ready, and just remember your head has been inverted, so as you come up, soften through the knees, tap the toe out on the mat if you need to, or keep it floating and run. Your eyes slowly up a focal point, bringing your head up last. Cross the right leg over the left. Go post frame through the arms, overlaying the right arm on top of the left, and then trying to sink the weight a little bit deeper into your bum and your heels as you ease into the eagle line. When you're ready, unbind, tapping the toe on the floor or keep it floating. Reach for that big toe on the right. Left hand soft and relaxed, brace on your hips or T-shaped, whichever works for you. Holding for a few seconds in the A line before you open up into the B line. Come back to the A line. Warrior three is coming next. Try to keep the leg floating or tap it onto the mat if you need to. And if you don't feel comfortable extending the arms, think of a plain arm. So just play where you're comfortable. And then gently drop the hands to the mat. Make sure that you've got enough playroom as you come into your standing step. And then gently jump up three times before finding your way to Uttanasana. Softly folding forward, rocking the body weight back and forth. When you're ready, step or hop your way into a plank up. Nice and strong through the body. Chaturanga down with control. Setting up your up dog. And then easing your way to a down dog before taking a time out in child pose. Toes together, knees open nice and wide. Take a little time up. Ease your way back into your down dog frame and use the down dog frame to give you a little hop through room to find your way into Sukhasana. Maybe coming onto the fingertips Bending the knees in a relaxed dog. As you bend the knees, launch forward, crossing the right leg in front of the left and tucking into easy sit. Sukhasana. Gently take a twist to the right, crossing the left hand to the outside of the right knee, embracing the right fingertips gently behind the right hip, trying to lengthen up through the spine. Keep gripping with your hand and resisting with the knee. Take a big breath in, come back to the center line and take the twist in the opposite direction. Pull with the hand, resist with the knee, lengthen through your spine, relax and release on the exhale. You're going to come into a gentle forward fold from here, gently dropping your fingertips or your palms to the floor and folding forward. If you can easily connect your palms and your elbows to the floor, push softly through the forearms and sink your hip line back. From here, we're gonna set up a modified wide standing straddle. And we won't take it too wide today. We'll bring the feet off the mat. So you're gonna, from your forearm position, you're gonna drag the weight forward onto your knees, untuck the feet behind you, stepping off your mat and coming into a modification of prasarita. Feet are in parallel. So you've got the feet facing in the same orientation towards the front of your mat, not in a turn-out position. Weight very equal on the outer quadrant of your foot and maybe try to walk the hands back, stacking them between the two legs. If you can't easily reach the floor, use your block, find a lean-in position or maybe end in a tabletop line and just gently cup the back chain of your legs. So play where you're comfortable. 
From here, we're gonna bring it into a deep squat. You're gonna allow the feet to softly splay out as much as you need to, to drop down through the bum bones, bringing your hands to prayer and pushing with the elbows on the inside of your knees. If coming low to the floor is not an option for you today, from Placerita, just softly splay the feet out, think more goddess, and just find a resting spot on the top of your thighs for your hand, tucking that tailbone under, pulling your belly in. Find your way back to Prasarita. Every time you hit Prasarita, try to walk the hands through and try to drop the crown a little bit closer to the floor. Inverting the blood into the head, giving your face a beautiful rinse and mini facelift. As you drop back into your squat line, bring the head up last, giving your blood pressure a chance to just stabilize. And then from your squat line, you're going to see if you can dip the weight back and come back into easy sit, leading with the left leg in front. Just gently drop back. You can bring the fingertips to the floor behind you if you need to and re-tuck your legs into easy sit, leading with the left leg in front. Big breath in. On the exhale, rotate softly to the left. Keep that spine nice and lengthened. Take a big inhale in. And on an exhale, twist softly to the right. Big breath in, bring it back to center and softly fold forward, trying to connect your hands to the mat as best you can. Pushing softly through the forearms or maybe even using the block on the floor in front of you and find a stack position that works for you. You're going to ease your way from here, drag the weight forward onto the knees, coming into a squat line this time if you can first. Pick the squat that works for you. Drop those bum bones down to the floor. Push with the inside of, or push with the outside of your um, elbows on the inside of the knees. And then find your way into that modified placerita, squaring up through the feet, nodding your crown to the floor, inverting the blood and creeping the hands through. If you can comfortably creep through, maybe invert the hands and creep them right through, trying to get a little bit more of a stretch. Ease your way back to your squat line, bringing the heels in slightly, pushing with those elbows and trying to open up through the groin as you lengthen as much as you can through the spine. Pretend that your crown is being gently pulled up to the ceiling. From here, you're going to find your way back onto the bum, either coming back into easy sit or finding a half lotus line on the right. Dropping the hands back to the floor. Find your easy sit or take the right foot and tuck that heel in as close to the inside of the left hip bone as you can. Sitting up nice and tall, take a soft twist to the right. Opposite hand to knee, maybe pushing that knee away gently as you come into the twist. Lengthening through the spine as much as you can. Inhale to come back to center. Exhale to softly twist either opposite hand to knee or right hand to right knee and keep pushing that knee away if you feel that you need a little bit more opening through the groin. Play where you're comfortable today. Give me a few more breaths here and then we'll fold it forward from the half lotus line. Ardha Padmasana. Gently fold forward using the block on the mat if you need to or just connecting the forearms gently to the floor. As you fold or drape your torso forward, Keeping the belly button softly pulled in. Give me a few more breaths here. Then you're going to find your way into a deep squat, Malasana, from here. From your forearm position on the mat, creep the weight forward, dragging the weight forward onto the knees, untuck the feet behind you. Coming into your squat line, so allowing the feet to softly splay out. Wiggling around, readjust yourself on the mat 
and find your way into Malasana. Then drop your hands gently to the floor, square up through the feet and find your modified standing straddle. Prasarita Kadotonasana. Maybe inverting your hands, creeping them through. Play where you're comfortable. Ease your way back into a squat line from here. Using those elbows, lengthen up through the spine, push softly through those palms. Keep lengthening through the spine, keep that gut softly pulled in to center. You're gonna ease your way into a half lotus line, leading with the left leg on top. Ready? Let's do it. Lean the way back if you need to. Tuck into easy sit or half lotus with the left leg on top. Big breath in, take a little twist to the left, push the right hand or use the right hand to push the left knee softly away as you come into the twist, lengthening through your spine as best you can. Ease your way back to center. Inhale to prepare on the exhale, take the twist to the other side, opposite hand to knee or same hand to knee and push away. Long and lengthen through the spine, bum bones equally weighted, so try not to lean all of the um, weight into one of the bum bones, try to even out to the center. Bring it back to the midline, Inhale to prepare, on the exhale, softly fold forward using your block if you need to, trying to drape your palms and your elbows to the floor, coming to rest softly on the forearms. And if you're in the half lotus line, you might feel that left heel gently digging into the lower abdominal cavity on the right, gently massaging your colon, setting up peristalsis for the day. From here, you're gonna gently creep the weight forward, untucking the feet behind you and setting up your deep squat line. Opening up as best you can to the pelvis, using the elbows, lengthening through the spine, dropping those bum bones evenly to the floor. Then allow the fingertips or the palms to connect to the mat, square up through the feet and come up into a standing straddle, creeping the hands through, playing where you're comfortable. And you can even play with that weight bearing again, alternating, rocking the weight between the forefront and the back of your foot or holding steady with the weight bearing equal. Ease your way back into that squat line. One last time. Lengthen through the spine. Pretend that there's a little suction cup, gently pulling that crown up towards the ceiling as you sink as low as you can into Malasana. From here, we're gonna come into a forward fold maybe dropping your fingertips and your palms to the mat and then heel toe your feet in. And either keeping the feet stepping underneath your hips or heel toeing all the way in to connect your big toes and your ankles as you come into one last forward fold, either hands connected to the mat or maybe reaching with the back of your palms for the calves and gently hugging nose to knee as you fold forward or keeping the hands connected to the floor, bracing on your thighs, or using your block and finding a lean-in position into the mat. Gently soften through the knees. Remember your head has been inverted, so bring up the head last as you gently wag or roll up. We're gonna end off with a little balancing exercise and we'll keep it really small. Trying to keep your narrow mountain position or opening up the feet so that you're stacking comfortably in parallel with the feet underneath the hips. Find a focal point on the wall in front of you. Just keep your eyes softly trained on that point. Arms 
are soft and relaxed at your side or maybe brace into the hips. Then think of bending the right knee and just keeping the big toe connected to the mat. When the balance feels good, see if you can peel that toe off the floor, bringing the knee up into the tabletop lock. It should feel relatively easy if your balance is with you today. Bring it back to the floor and shake it out. Repeat that exercise on the left. Find your focal point, soften through the left knee, keep the big toe connected to the mat, and then when you're ready, think knee to nose and stop at about hip height in a comfortable tabletop line. We're going to repeat the same exercise, but this time you're going to close your eyes. So gently close the eyes, find that rooting through your feet. See if you can bend the right knee and the body might start to wobble a little bit. Open the eyes if you need to, center yourself. And gently close them again and see if you can keep that toe of position on the mat. When you're ready, think of floating up softly into table. You're going to find that you'll wobble a lot more than you usually would. Bring it down, give it a little shake out. We don't realize how much we rely on our sense of sight to orient ourselves the whole time. And if you take away that sense, you suddenly have to tune in and take your focus in. Find your footing, find your sense of balance. When you're ready, see if that big toe will come up off the mat. Maybe soften through your supported knee. Then gently find your way back into a narrow mountain. Float your hands to pray. Close your eyes and take your focus totally in. Find that soft footing, that rooting to keep you balanced for the remainder of the day. Namaste to you all. Thank you so much for coming out and playing with me today. Really hope you enjoyed today's balancing series. If the balance was off today, don't stress about it. Understand that the body is different day to day. Sometimes the balance is good and sometimes it's just not there. Also, if you're quite stressed at the moment, you'll find that balancing poses become particularly challenging as it's harder to still the senses and hone the focus. As always, just do what you can and let go of the rest. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this class. Remember to subscribe with your notification bell on and I shall see you all for playtime on the mat tomorrow. Until then, keep it light. <laughs>